truck update. Where are we at? So I've been doing a few bits off the old camera. Uh, mostly just boring little fiddly bits. So I'll give you a quick zoom round, show what I've been up to, uh, as a little update. Basically I'm trying to get ready to retake, get his nose back on. Could that be good? Taking up space. I want to get him condensed down to one parking space. Right, let's have a look. Okay. So she's back up on actual stands. Just so I can get underneath it and finish the bits. We have power steering rack installed. That was a tight bastard. But there you go, she's in. And the power steering rack lines and the oil lines are all in. And again, all a bit tight. Steering geometry has had to be redone. So we run three UJs, one straight out of the rack, one up off the shock mount, and third one into the original steering column, which was machined down to take it. And that's how we get round the engine. You can see that is tight to the old headers, but it's not touching. Uh, also one in this. So this is an electric This is an electric power steering pump out of a modern car, an Audi A3, I think. So this means we don't have to run a power steering auxiliary pump off the engine to run our rack. Uh, it's centrifugal, like the ones they use in the Mini, so they make a bit of a whoosh, like a whirry noise. Sounds like a supercharger without actually having one. <laughs> uh, so that's all new. I've got to figure out the wiring on that. Not too complicated. So that's all got to go in, and then when I'm also putting back together all the loom back together that we had to take apart to get the cab off. Uh, so that's all on. All the injectors are back in, all the wiring loom through the firewall. That's all back on. So the engine's pretty much all in. Uh, cab mounts are all mounted on. Managed to level off the cab all nicely on her solid mounts, and she went on there like a dream. So she's all on properly now. And that's it really. Sounds like it's not a lot. But it's just been loads of little fiddly faff fiddly faffy stuff. Had to make some adapter some shims to mount the rack. So had to take over the lathe and cut all them up. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing here is I want to just give you a little video on this remote Astra electric power steering pump. It's gonna be powering my Mustang 2 power rack. I've never done one of these before. This is the first time for me, as well as you. Uh, so I'm gonna put some oil in and power it up. Just wanna test it's all working nicely before I wire it all into the car. So I'm just gonna do a little test run, put some fluid in and uh, see what happens. First up, let's put some tubes in. Okay. So what I've done, got myself a battery, and then I've got the positive and the negative, wipe a couple of jumpies, and we're bang them onto power. Now although that's now got power, it won't fire up because it needs a trigger. Put my snippies down, there they are. Brown and white doesn't do anything apparently, so I'll suck that off. do is put the other two to live. In the car, I think they need to go on ignition and an alternator. This should be it. Fingers crossed this doesn't make a massive mess. Whoa! Something 
for that in there. the steering wheel in one direction. Let's have a little bit of a wiggle. Maybe I got my lines around the wrong way. Joy. It really wants to steer the car for some reason hard left. I'm like obviously something up. Enjoy. Yeah, don't know what I've done there. I have to try and swap these lines around. It's gonna make a load of mess. This brings to mind. I'm sure I double checked the line orientation on the tinter web. Under the tinter web of selling porkies or something's amiss. <sighs> Let's dig into it, find out. Well, I made a right mess with that. Changing those lines over. Hopefully, I'll clean most of it up. Let's, fingers crossed, this has got it. If it doesn't work, I don't quite know what to do or how to rectify it, but we could be optimistic. Oh. Please don't turn the steering. Please does not turn the steering. Please don't turn the steering. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Gurgle, gurgle. Oh, it's going the other way now. So yesterday we linked up the power steering lines and I ran it up and the steering went crazy. Jumping around doing some weird things. I got these lines hooked up around the wrong way basically. The uh, flow and return. So it's still not quite right and I'm not quite sure if it's pressure related. I've got these pumps put out between 1000 and 1200 PSI and the Mustang racks I believe are the happiest around 800, 7, 800. And if you put a bit more pressure in, it just makes the steering lighter. I don't think it makes it do anything weird. Well, I've got a slight weird thing that once it's pressurized up, it has tended to slightly wander to the right. So I don't know whether I've got a dodgy rack. It's brand new. I'll be contacting people I've got it off, if that is the case. Or whether it's just this incorrect pressure is making the rack do a bit of a funny thing. Now, I can get a special little regulator valve to put in those lines, which I'm gonna order up today, uh, just for peace of mind, to make sure that's not the issue. And if it is, it's a nice thing to have, because it's actually a little dialer that you can wind the pressure up and down and set your power steering, basically as light or as heavy as you want it. So I sort of dial it in, which is a quite nice thing. So I'm gonna do that. Right there. I think I've got everything bundled up underneath and around the engine bay. Just to check this power steering out, having not played with it before, I am going to just drop it on the floor, on its wheels, put some air in it, and just see how the steering feels. And then put it back up in the air again, and put the nose on. Okay, 
Cars on its wheels. Let's give this power steering a little go, shall we? It's not the quietest thing. Right, pump's running. Let's check it out. Well, it's doing the thing. At last. It is time to put his nose back on. And you lift up the hoist, try and squeeze it through this gap behind me, between the truck and the mares, and uh, try and wing it on. Right, let's do it. If you're wondering about the dungarees, uh, Lidl, 11 pounds, thought they were a bargain, thought I'd try them out, do feel a little uh, German with them on, not gonna lie, but hey, 11 quid, that'll do. Okay, put you back in your stand. Condensing all these panels all back on the truck, so uh, it takes up less space in the workshop, which would be good. I've got more camper vans coming. Uh, let's crack on.
buttoned back up. Lots and lots of little nuts and bolts that have been up underneath there. So what we're gonna do now, give you a quick show around what it looks like when it's all back together. And then I'm gonna film it going back down on the floor. I've not seen it with all the rear panels on lowered, so it'd be good to see. Now it sits a bit lower. There you go. That there is where the side exit exhaust pipes normally come out, but obviously the exhaust system's not quite back in yet. Tailgate's on. GMC Pacific one, this one, it being a GMC. And everything fits pretty nicely inside the original tubs. I thought maybe the shock mounts might touch the edges, but it looks like the measurements all worked out and got a good 25, 30 mil between there and the edge. So that is all gone swimmingly. Right, let's stick you down here. sitting more tucked than it used to. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share if you like it. Cheers.